I like to see the end of each month as like a little checkpoint that can pull you back on track if you've wandered. To get you back on top of things that you might have let go of, to realign you with your intentions that you set at the start of the year. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through my monthly reset where I do a bunch of little activities for future me. To start my reset, I always begin with my environment. I start external and then I move internal. This was the state of my home. We definitely needed a tidy. So I put on a hot girl gym hype playlist to listen to and I did all of the little tidying tasks that make me feel better. I like to start with one room and then only move to the next when that room is tidy. I don't aim for perfection. I really just want to get my space to the point where it feels good to be in. We use a visible chore chart to get our chores done. And I've recently made it this magnetized Kanban style board because it's just so much easier to use than what we had before. I love having a visible list of all of the things to do each quarter, each week, each month and day and moving things over to the done column is such a satisfying feeling. I wanted to get all of my things that were on the chore chart done to kick off my monthly reset. So I cleaned out the fridge, cleaned out the cat food mat because she's so messy, and I cleaned the bathroom sink with my Blue Land spray. This video is sponsored by Blue Land, where I can in my life I like to make sustainable swaps for my products. And one place that I've wanted to improve in my life is my cleaning products because I throw away way too many single-use plastic bottles in the cleaning arena. And I spend so much on those products, as you can see. I always thought that making cleaning sustainable would be very difficult and I need to make up my own concoctions of cleaning products that I wouldn't know if they would actually work, but Blue Land makes it so easy. Blue Land believes that you can have it all in your everyday products. Their ingredients are effective, convenient, safe for use, affordable, and sourced from clean ingredients. Unlike your average traditional cleaners, they are not sold in single-use plastic bottles. All you really need to clean your house and clean your hands are these little nickel-sized tablets. Blue Land doesn't use any single-use plastics in any of their components, including their bottles, tablets, wrappers, and their shipping. Their products are vegan and cruelty-free, which we love to see. And they are made with clean ingredients, so they're made without ammonia, VOC, soy, night, chlorine, bleach, and parabens. Blue Land is also EPA certified. Basically, a bunch of EPA scientists have evaluated all the ingredients in the Blue Land products and then said, yep, yeah, it adheres to the safer choices stringent criteria. In the grocery store, I'd usually pick up a cleaner for like five, six dollars maybe, but with Blue Land, it's just two dollars for one tablet. So you pay two dollars for your multi purpose cleaner, for your glass cleaner. Plus, the bottles are much bigger than the cleaning bottles that I would usually buy from the supermarket, so you're gonna get way more for your money. So to use your Blue Land products, you're going to be shipped a Forever bottle and a nickel-sized product. You wanna fill your Forever bottle with hot water and drop in one of the tablets and chuck the nozzle on after the tablet has fully dissolved. You can use it in minutes, there's no shaking or stirring required. I got the Clean Essentials kit, this is what is included. So you've got your bathroom spray, you've got your glass spray, you've got your multi-purpose spray, and you also get your hand soap. If you grab a kit, you're already going to save 20%, but I have a code for you to save an extra 20%. All you have to do is click the link below to get 20% off your first kit. They don't really do these discounts often, so you don't want to miss out. So Blue Land actually ships to Australia, the UK, New Zealand, and of course the US. To top off my tidying, I also cleaned out my handbag. My handbag is something I carry around everywhere with me, and when it's messy and I can't find things in it, it's not a go, so I wanted to clean it out. I also realized that it was kind of ready for a wash, so I chucked it in our big laundry sink and I gave it a soak. The next part of my reset was switching over my office and the bedroom. Room. This isn't something that I would do in a normal monthly reset, but Luke and I were in self-isolation. I had canceled all of my plans and I was like, now is the time to reset my rooms completely. So we're doing a true space reset today and we're moving my office into here. We're swapping these rooms. Right now, this is the situation and in here is my office. And around here, you can't really see it, but in here is um, a little recording studio. The reason that I have that is because I have my app intention and we record meditations on there as well as journaling audios. I decided to make this room the bedroom because of the audio space. But now that I've been in here for a few months, I'm realizing it was a mistake. I wake up pretty early. Most of the time Luke doesn't wake up with me. So every morning I'm like tiptoeing around to get to my office and then I'm going back out and I hate it and I feel so bad because I just feel like I'm constantly waking him up in the morning. Of course, he's always like, no, I don't mind. Like it's fine, but I don't like it. In my head, I'm really like, this is gonna be so simple and easy, but I feel like I must be underestimating it. I started by taking the bed apart. It was at this point that I got super overwhelmed and I felt like giving up. So I decided to take a break and break the task down into the absolute tiniest steps possible. So I broke that down super small and I find that that is what helps me, even though it kind of seems really extra. 
The quote, what looks like resistance is often a lack of clarity, applies so much in my life. And when I do a little brain numb like that, even just with individual tasks that you would think would be quite simple and intuitive, I just find it really, really helpful to push me forward. And then I can tick off all of my little tasks as I move through. Like I feel so much better just after doing that. Then I got back to work vacuuming, pulling things apart, moving things around, following my checklist every step of the way. A reminder to self that if any task ever feels too big, we break it down even if it's small, even if it's categorically small. Like I don't know what I would be doing without my checklist. I'm so grateful that I created it. Okay, so it's messy, but this is the situation right now. I don't know that I love it. I'm thinking if I can try and fit that and that on this side, that'd be a little bit better, but it might take me a while. I was very optimistic about this task. In the end, I wasn't happy with how I actually arranged it. So I reshuffled it the next morning and it ended up looking more like this. A a lot more open, a lot more spacious, and I'm much happier with things this way. It really is just same stuff, different place. Same set of drawers here. I do want to get a mirror for there. Couch is here, which works so much better because there's so much more space to just walk through. It just feels so much clearer. I've got my little cabinet over here. I think I'm going to get a taller one of these so that I can fit some more stuff that previously lived in like the shelving in the bedroom. Then we've got my clothes over here. My desk fits here and it kind of is the perfect place where it's not where I wanted it. I wanted my desk to be over here because I was like, so nice sun coming through but this works still too this is the bedroom it's super minimal and not very exciting still gotta sort that out i'm so happy with how these rooms turned out a big part of a monthly reset is refreshing your mind starting with something that so many people fail to do which is revisiting intentions that you've set so many people they set their intentions at the start of the year in their iphone notes app they never look at it ever again and sometimes that can be out of resistance because you know you haven't done anything towards it sometimes it can just be because you forget but it's really important important that New Year's is not the only time of year that you're setting intentions for where you want to go. So this is a time of absolute non-judgment. Judging past you will never make current you more successful. Evaluating and reflecting on past you, sure, but judging, it's a no. So I looked over my vision that I wrote at the start of the year. I just read it through and it was really inspiring to read. And I also focused on my desktop vision board that I made in Canva in my video on how to create a vision board for 2022. So I centered my vision board around questions as you guys know, but when I wrote the questions, some of them were really broad and vague. For example, I had on it the question, how might I create healthy eating habits to serve my mind and body? Which is pretty broad. So I focused it down to the most impactful thing when it comes to healthy eating eating habits, which for me is meal prepping. So I turned the question into, how might I create a consistent meal and snack prepping routine? When I have a consistent meal and snack prepping routine, I am much more consistently healthy. So that is what I need to focus on. I actually focused down a few of the questions on my vision board because I knew that I'd kind of half done it when I came up with my questions. I used the book called Invisible Solutions, which is this book of all of these ways that you can reframe your questions, if that's something that you're interested in. Then I moved on to monthly resetting using my planner sitting on the couch. I started by writing out a few words to describe the month. This is kind of just like tying your month up. You can complete a little monthly reset alongside me if you'd like. Just grab a paper and pen. It's nothing fancy. Start by describing your month in just a few words, wrapping it up in a bow. These are my words for January. It starts out with isolating because we have just done seven days of isolation. I used to just do like one word to describe January and then I was just like, mm, no, <laughs> because I could describe a different word every week. I could describe a different word every day. So I describe the general themes of the month. Then reflect on your top three accomplishments for the month. These are my top three accomplishments for the month. And these can range from, I didn't react in the same way that I used to, to a stressful moment, to I published my first blog article. Don't restrict yourself, a win is a win. Firstly, I've started working at cafes and my local library, just doing my little power hours. And it's just been so nice. And it's this tiny step. It's more like it's on the edge of my comfort zone, but I just really love doing it. It just makes me really happy. Secondly, I redesigned a bunch of my templates. Not very exciting, but like the way that I redesigned them, it's just so happy. And thirdly, we set stronger boundaries and followed through on them. Love to see it. The next thing I like to do is highlight my top three highlights for the month. So these are the top moments, the top memories that I made in the month. So these are my top three highlights for the month. By doing this, you give yourself an indicator of the things that you enjoy the most so that you can create more of those moments going forward. Firstly, I went roller skating with Sam in this little like roller skating setup and it was so fun. I did fall. Also went ice skating with my sister Amy and my little niece on a little mental health day. And me and Luke have been going on more nature walks, which has been so nice. Now look forward and plan your moments for the next month. 
So I planned in three January things. Firstly, I've got a coffee thrift picnic and lunch day in Brisbane. So I have a friend from Brisbane. I feel like I've canceled on her a million times. I haven't actually asked her about these plans yet, but if it doesn't fit in here, I'll make it fit in somewhere else. I pre-planned out my whole Valentine's Day with Luke, which is like, look, unnecessary, but I know what I want and this is it. And I also want to do a little self date, which is just like hot chocolate drifting. And then I want to visit Plants in Me, which is a new vegan restaurant in Southport. When it comes to creating memorable moments in my life, I think that I'm responsible for creating them rather than waiting for them to come to me. But to be clear, I'm also a person who on the weekend, I'm more likely to lean towards like cozying up in bed, watching The Witcher, maybe doing a TikTok scroll, which is all great and well. But the things that I really want to be doing is going to the beach with the juice, going on a nature walk. But those things for me don't happen sporadically. So I plan them in. The next Part of your monthly reset reflection section is shifting over to your goals. You need to be reviewing your goals and asking yourself what is working and what is not working. Here's what's working, here's what's not working. Then you wanna use that information to create any changes. I've gotten into the habit of just writing a list of things I need to do for my life map goals and not scheduling them into my calendar. And every time I do that, of course, things don't happen. I don't like to schedule everything into my calendar, but when it comes to my life map goals and just goal tasks in general, I like to chuck them in my calendar because otherwise they don't get done. You don't make time for your goals if you don't make time for your goals. Cut goals that aren't serving you. And if you've created too many goals and you're finding yourself overwhelmed, cull them. If you don't want to cut a goal, consider asking yourself how can I create accountability for this goal or how can I make this goal just more enjoyable for me to pursue this is my one big change that I want to make one of my goals this quarter is to create a mindful morning routine so the way that I started out doing that is by using the book miracle morning and I was going to create 30 days of me doing miracle morning it was going to be wonderful I was doing it for the sake of the video of course like that would be my only why for doing it though so I'd be doing these activities and tasks and feeling like this has no value to me except for the fact that I'm going to get a video out of it which just felt so pointless. And so I made the executive decision that I was going to stop doing Miracle Morning and just turn it into a morning routine that I actually enjoy, that actually feels impactful, that feels genuinely mindful. And that's the one big change that I'm making from this month going forward. So moving forward, Amy, my sister and I did a little life map date. This is a weekly date that we do where we talk about our goals. So we talk about what challenges have come up. We brainstorm ideas for each other. We give each other support and we try to ask each other good questions that lead us in the right direction. It creates accountability and it keeps on track plus it's a really good chance for us to just catch up we like to actually fill out our weekly review and our weekly plan before we get to the meeting or like in silence at the meeting we do tend to ramble so we want to keep it a little shorter if we can i recommend that everyone do this with someone but you just want to find someone who's as committed as you i think is the most important piece of this after we set our weekly goals i wanted to meal prep i wanted to keep myself fed for the rest of the week keep in mind i probably did a lot more in this monthly reset video than i usually would because we were isolating and I I didn't have plans. I did more than usual because I had nothing else to do. So I was going for a vegan chicken and corn soup because this is one of my favorite dishes to get from takeaway. Definitely not a chef. This recipe was pretty average, but it turned out okay. Tastes okay. It could be better. I'm happy. So I made a big batch of this to keep me fed for a little while. And I also watched Euphoria because I don't really love the process of cooking. I do like to sometimes mix it with doing more enjoyable things like watching a TV show. Then Luke had bought home donuts and we sat down for a relationship meeting. We were actually supposed to do this the night before. It just happened to land on this day. So this isn't a part of the monthly reset, but I'm gonna show you it anyways. So Luke actually heard about doing a relationship meeting from Tim Ferriss, who is a very popular podcaster. And he suggested it. And of course I was like, yes, let's do that. It's a very very mean thing to be doing. I've actually had quite a few people ask me how you can convince your partner to do a relationship meeting with you. I'd focus more on how you want to be an abnormally happy couple. Like you want to be a great couple and less on you want a relationship meeting. Also make it cozy, make it nice. Look bought donuts. We try to keep it cute. And also just emphasize how important it is to you. If it's important to you, a good partner will absolutely be willing to sacrifice 30 minutes of their week to do this with you. So we always start with gratitude. This activity is just really nice. It creates a a really nice feeling. Then we ask, what do you think you've been doing well? What do you think you could be better with? And what would you love to see more of from each other? We also go to the chore chart. We look at what's been done, what hasn't been done, what needs to be done. We also go to the calendar. We chuck in a date night for the week. And we also check in with each other and ask what's on for the week so we can keep up to date. Personally, I love this ritual, wouldn't change it. It makes me feel like we're a team. It gives me a space where I can raise any problems that I might have in a really healthy way. And I just feel like it creates a better relationship 
gorgeous. If you liked this video, you'll probably like my playlist full of videos where I get things done, refresh and reset my life. I have so many people that tell me that they play these videos in the background while they're doing their life admin days, while they're doing their reset days, and I love to hear it. That playlist is gonna be on the screen, it's gonna be down below. I appreciate you so very much and I will see you soon.